I think it'll make a significant difference for this organization. Okay, so let's do this the right way today. Let's have a blast doing it, man. All right, here we go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Well, hello there, friends, and welcome into our Champion Chevrolet studio for a very special production. Alongside Chris Murray, I'm Mike Stephenson, and this is our Nevada football spring camp special. Over the next hour, we will dissect the Silver and Blues 15 spring practices and a bunch of storylines as we head into the 2024 season. And of course, those storylines, Chris, starting back in December of 2023 with Jeff Choate being hired as the new leader of Nevada football. And with that, big things are expected because he talks a big game. He does talk a big game. He is expecting Nevada to be the most improved team in the FBS in terms of win total at the introductory press conference. He won the press conference. A yes, lot of did. energy a lot of motivational speak actually remind me a little bit of Chris Alt he's a no-nonsense guy but a guy who can get you really rallied around the community really rallied around a program and really excited about this next generation in Nevada, of Nevada football and certainly that excitement is required after back-to-back -back two in ten seasons but this is a fresh slate and Jeff Choate has that experience was the head coach at Montana State had a lot of success there comes from University of Texas where he was co-defensive coordinator now he's going to try and build Nevada into the winning programs he's been a part of in the past. And as he said, I've never gone 2 and 10. <laughs> and of course, he was still uh, fulfilling his duties as the co-defensive coordinator with the Longhorns as he was introduced as Nevada's next head coach, ended up finishing his duties with Texas at the college football playoff, which is where every single team in the country would love to end its season. So Jeff Choate has excelled at the highest level of the sport, and now he's hitting the ground running and trying to uh, build up this Wolfpack program. And, and let's, let's be honest, he hasn't minced words about the work that needs to be done to get this program where he wants it to be. He understands that there's a lot of work ahead, but it seems like he wants to put in that work, both in terms of getting people into the stands. You look at Nevada last year, ninth out of 12 teams in the Mountain West in attendance the last couple of years, right around 15,000 fans per game. That's not high enough. He's trying to get Nevada to be a football town again mm -hmm. here in Reno. He's said that he's been very open about how important it is to be successful in football because it trickles down to all the rest of the sports. But looking on the field, yeah, this team doesn't have an identity. It hasn't had an identity the last couple of years. Offensively, they've really, really struggled. Bottom five in the nation last year in terms of points per game. Defensively, they've really, really struggled as well. He's a defensive-minded coach. He's also been a special teams coordinator. But I really am looking at that offense because Nevada football has long been known for its offense over the years. Obviously, Chris Alt, a big part of that. But this has been a team that routinely is among the national leaders in scoring. And that just has not been the case the last couple of years. still looking for its first 1,000-yard rusher in what's piling on over five years now, That's right? Since 2016. 16. So we're talking eight seasons now as we jump into the 2024 season. We're going to talk a little bit about how Coach Choate wants to make Reno a football town again. Again, his first task, though, was to fill his staff. We actually have connected with almost each and every staff member. You can see those interviews at NevadaSportsNet.com. And then it was spring football. And we connected with Jeff Choate on day one of what he said would be the most important spring in his tenure. A lot of work goes into leading up to day one of spring practice, especially when it's a new team, new staff, new era. And uh, I thought the kids were awesome today. They really were. Um, one of the benefits of, of some of the, the rule changes in college football is you get a little bit more time to do some football-related activities with them in the offseason. And uh, I think that's helped accelerate their learning curve. And the most important thing that we're trying to accomplish in the course of spring ball is learn how to do things the right way, the Nevada way, the way we want things done. And I was really pleased with the kids' intent today. So again, that was Jeff Choate sounding off after day one, the first of 15 spring practices that the Wolfpack was allotted. And, and talking with the team after those 15, I think they felt like they got a lot accomplished and kind of set a foundation. But the fact is, there's a whole lot more out there, and this summer is going to be big. But this was the first step. You have to set the culture. You have to set the expectations. You have to set the standard. If you want to play for Nevada football under Jeff Choate, this is what you have to do. And this is what these 15 practices were all about, setting that standard really, really high and not backing down from it. So that's why this was the most in, important spring camp of Jeff Schultz era because he is really setting the foundation for what he's trying to build. Uh, it's going to be 
a long-term growth, but you can't, at the very beginning, set that hurdle low. You have to set right. it super, super high, and if they don't reach it, they're not part of the program, so there's been a little bit of a weeding out as we get through spring camp, but that's going to be natural, that attrition for any first-year head coach. Uh, speaking of setting the bar high, soon after his hiring, Jeff Choate appeared at a Nevada basketball game in, in front of a packed Lawler Event Center crowd, and, and he proclaimed, this is not a rebuild, this is a launch. No better place to say that than at a Wolfpack men's basketball <laughs> game, because for the last handful of years and even beyond that, this is, of course, a basketball town. Coach Choate wants to get a little share of that with the football team and kind of turn Northern Nevada back into a, a football town as well. But I think that shows that you can have success at Nevada. I know it is a different program, but men's basketball has been one of the standards in whatever conference it's been, the Mountain West or the WAC before that for the last two decades. Mm -hmm. If you can have success in men's basketball, you should be able to have success in football as well. So that's a really good example of this community will support you if you go to a, a really good team out there, a team that plays hard, a team that has success. And I think Jeff Choate knows he would love to see Mackey Stadium packed for the season opener on August 24th against SMU. But I think in the back of his mind, he knows they got to go prove it first before they get that bandwagon full. I know they're working really hard to try and get 25000 for that opener, um, but they're going to have to show the proof is in the pudding. That's I think true. before team, uh, players come out um, you know, and, and want to be recruited by the team, before the fans come out and they want to be a part of this whole process, I think he's done a really good job of speaking a big game and now actually putting that big game on the field starts here in a couple of months. We are not so patiently waiting for kickoff of the 2024 season. It's a heck of a schedule. As you get a look at the pack, throwing a little new wrinkle uh, this spring. They went out and scrimmaged at Carson High School, Chris, which is, again, Choate saying, hey, we want to be present in this community, not just the Reno Sparks community. Let's go up over the hill and, and go play a game in Carson and, and interact with those fans as well. He said he wants to be Northern Nevada's team. It's not just about Reno and Sparks. Certainly that is a big part of the population, but he's talked about Fernley. He's talked about Fallon. He's talked about Winnemucca. Obviously Carson right there. You talk about Gardnerville and Minden. You talk about Lake Tahoe as yeah. well. Uh, you put a pinpoint right at the uh, Reno Arch and you draw about an hour drive away. You're talking about five, 600,000 people who could potentially be Wolfpack fans. You have to do that outreach because Nevada Athletics and Nevada Football is asking a lot from its community both of those entities have to go into that community as well and put their arms around Wolfpack fans and say, hey, come on back to Mackey Stadium and we're going to make you proud. And, you know, that's one of the reasons they did that scrimmage. Coach Choate wants the buy-in from the community. You can bet he wants it from his players as well. And I think we've made progress. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I've told these guys from day one, it's like, hey, we got to get to 80% of this roster has got to be committed when we play on, on August 24th. And, you know, I know that's like everybody's going, why not 100? I'm like, because I'm a realist. That's why. Um, and I think we're making strides. And I really think that you're going to see, because of the nature of modern college football, whether it's when we get done with spring ball or Ohio State gets done with spring ball, there's going to be movement and change, right? And that's the reality, and I can't get emotional about that. That's just the fact that how, what everybody at our level, at every level, has to deal with now. And so the guys that are here in that room, when we come back on May 19th and we start our summer program on the 20th, that's the 80% I need committed. And I, I think we've made progress there, and I believe that when those guys are sitting in that chair, they're, they're going to be committed because we're going to have those conversations, and I, we're going to look each other in the eye, and we're going to be transparent and honest. And the ones that are there, I'm going to ride with them, man. I'm going to coach the guys that are here. That message that Coach Choate shared with us, it seems to be – not falling on deaf ears in that locker room because a lot of the players we talk to say they appreciate that about Coach Joe, that he is up front and he is a realist. And if you're going to ride with him, he's going to ride with you. He doesn't mm -hmm. want a bunch of individuals in this program. He wants one collective unit. And I think the spring was a good chance to get that started. I think communication is important in any relationship and certainly from a player to a coach. And I think Jeff Choate is a very strong communicator in terms of getting across his message. He had 80 returning players from last year's roster. None of those guys signed up to play for Jeff Choate. So if yep. the fit's not right, they can part. That's okay. He's saying if we get through spring, you have to be bought in. You have to be sold uh, on this team, on this staff, on me as your head coach. And they've put a lot of work into that culture in terms of culture Wednesdays and bonding activities to try and make sure this team is as tight as possible before they actually get to play in their first game this year. One guy he's certainly uh, happy to still have around is number 32 on defense, Drew Watts. I had a chance to catch up with Nevada's star linebacker following spring practices. All right, Drew, spring is a wrap. What can you say about the work you guys put in over those 15 practices? Uh, it was a good 15 practices. I think we identified a lot about ourselves and things we need to do for this season, things we need to fix, and things we can't do anymore if we want to win games and be competitive in this conference. You've been here for three head coaches now. What can you say about what Coach Choate has brought to the table as well as his staff? Um, I say with the three head coaches, Coach Choate's definitely the most passionate out of them, most more outgoing guy. 
and he just has that moxie about himself that's really easy to follow. And I can say that him and his staff, with all the experience that they have, they really made me a better player and taught me a different way to play football and expanded my game a little bit with all the things I've learned. And it's really helped a lot with my game and what I want to do. As one of the leaders on the PAX defense, why was it important for you to stick around and, and kind of lead by example here in this next season? Uh, it was more about the city. Uh, I love Reno, and it's really hard for me to leave here. And um, I want to win here. I've said that multiple times. I want to be here when this changes and when we compete for rings and championships and bowl games. I want to be a part of that process, and I want to be here when we do that. Uh, now that we jump into the summer, coaches cannot be as involved. What does the summer look like in your perspective? Uh, it's a lot for guys like me to step up. Uh, it's time for the players to take over the team and ch start to lead and do what the coaches say. They can't be out there as much. So we have a lot of player-led practices that are going to go on, and that's up to guys like me and, and Naki and guys who are leaders on this team to, to step up and build that culture and make sure we don't lose all the process we made in spring. What are the conversations like between the leaders on this team, especially obviously you guys who have been around here now for a few seasons? Um, we just, a lot of the conversations are just work on the little things, be more unified, start hanging out more outside of football and just be, be a team. Like we gotta get closer as a team. And I think we're, we're doing that with football, but it has to be stuff outside of football that we gotta do together and just be closer and be more competitive and be one and be one fist as we swing coming into this fall. And I think that we'll accomplish that this summer with the hard work we'll put in with Loco and uh, it's going to be a good summer for us. Uh, the Drew Watts that first stepped foot on campus versus the Drew Watts as we stand here today. What can you say about the growth that you've had so far as a young man and as a football player? Uh, I've matured a lot. Uh, the game is not just see ball, get ball anymore as I as I learned in high school and Pop Warner. Um, I've matured a lot and I feel like um, I've grown into a more of a man with the game. And I'm learning more of the game, more of the X's and O's and things that happen with offenses. And, and uh, that comes with Coach Choke. They're showing me a different side of the game. You know, he played, he was in the CFP and, you know, they run more complex schemes and stuff. So he's really showed me and, and developed my brain and developed my IQ. And that's how a type of player I am is high IQ, high, high knowledge. And it's gotten really better as the years gone on because I played a lot of football. Of course, last spring, you guys were excited about the potential for that team. And again, it was another 2-10 and ten season. What about this group tells you that that won't happen this fall? Um, I think it starts from the top. Um, the program just feels different. It has a lot of momentum, I think, that I didn't feel as much going into the last season with the spring. Yeah, it was a new team. We felt better. But this, it has a, a, a better feeling about it, about about the team and the, the competitive that's not that's going on in the practices that you guys don't see. It's, it just feels better. You can you can see it if you're there, but if you're not there, you have to wait till August. For you heading into your upperclassmen years, a couple Mountain West honorable mention nods. I'm sure you want to continue to rise through those ranks. Like, those ranks. I guess personally, what are your, some of your goals as you head into the summer and then, of course, the season? Uh, like I said before, I don't really focus on personal goals. They'll come, those come with team goals, but I do want to dominate the conference and assert myself. You know, I've had two back-to-back -back honorable mentions and I'm grateful for those, but those are just good. I want to be great and uh, that comes with putting more production on the field and doing better with my techniques and my flaws and I got to work on those this summer and, and this upcoming fall camp and I will work on that to be dominating this conference. What would you like fans to know about what is upcoming from Silver and Blue football? Uh, we're going to bring back that Mackey magic. Uh, we're going to get some good games in here. We're going to win some games here and we're going to compete this conference. So please come out. Please come support SMU. Let's pack. Let's strive for 25 like we've been saying. And please come out. We're going to put a better product on the field to just give you guys a better experience so we can have that experience and win some games at Mackey. What can you say? Drew Watts wants to stack some dubs. Nevada's First look at the 2024 team coming in the spring game. Coming up next on our Nevada Football Spring Camp Special, we go to that silver and blue contest. The headlines out of that game right after this. Hey, do not throw an extra football here. One ball and seven on seven. It's got to give you some love, baby. Let's go. Let's not argue for all the people Let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Go, 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 go. Yeah, we had Jeff Choate mic'd up for the silver and blue spring game. A lot more from Coach coming up in mere moments. But as our Nevada football spring camp special rolls on, we do want to look closer at the silver and blue game. Of course, spring every year culminates with this contest inside Mackey Stadium. Silver against blue, offense in silver, defense in blue. Final score, 21-15, defense gets the win. Chris, uh, what were your ultimate takeaways from this showcase? I thought the defense was better. I actually thought the scoring system was very beneficial for the offense, so I thought if the offense didn't win, there might be some issues on that side of the ball. Whenever you play an inter squad scrimmage, whenever you do a spring game, it's a zero-sum game. Yeah. If your defense looks awesome, that means the offense doesn't 
look so good and vice versa. And I think the offense did show that it has a lot of room to grow. Now, one of the interesting things about this spring game is the offensive coordinator for Nevada, Matt Lubick, is actually in Fort Collins as he um, is in remission from leukemia, which he was diagnosed with in October. So it's kind of been a work in progress with putting that offense together. Matt Lubick has been much more involved in terms of being able to help the team on Zoom and whatnot, but you're seeing a defensive touchdown right there. Two offensive touchdowns, the one defensive touchdown in the game. And the first score of the game, yes, was this defensive touchdown, courtesy of the Bishop Minogue product, the local kid, Malcolm McClure. Brendan Lewis, we're going to talk in exhaustion about the quarterbacks as you see him hooking up with another local product in North Valley's alum, Cam Zeidler. This is Anthony Grigsby Jr., a new quarterback piece for the Wolfpack. Again, that is one of the most intriguing storylines of the spring. I, w I had Coach Chode in my ears. You're going to hear his mic'd up coming up in mere moments, but uh, unforced errors was a storyline in this one as Marshawn Brown, another local kid out of Bishop Minogue, catches the touchdown from Brendan Lewis there. But a lot of a lot of these possessions, the pack was really shooting itself in the foot, frankly. And that was uh, been a problem the last couple of years, right? And you want to play as clean in football as possible. Now, there weren't a ton of turnovers, so that was a very big positive, but penalties, having too many men on the field, not getting the right read, not being able to execute, those all have to be eliminated. And yeah. it's going to take more than 15 minutes to eliminate that, and you're never going to play a perfect football game. But I will say, those Bishop Minot kids were fantastic. You've seen two touchdowns thus far, Malcolm McClure, Marshawn Brown, both Bishop Minot guys, and then probably the biggest hit of the entire scrimmage, Donovan DeRico, uh, also a Bishop Minogue grad, yeah. so the locals did shine in this spring game. How about the Miners showing out, and then right there, the kid from down under, Jaden O'Rourke, the big Aussie tight end, catching the touchdown from A.J. Bianco. As you look at Chubba Purdy, the younger brother of Brock, we'll talk about him uh, coming up here as Cross Patton gets loose for a little run. Ultimately, though, unfortunately, the biggest headline out of this game injuries and frankly coach Choate said after the game he always has a love and hate relationship with the spring game there's Delvon Campbell coming up with a hamstring he has since put himself in the transfer portal so maybe not as big of a worry here in Wolfpack land you see uh, John Bolay's there an offensive lineman injury uh, and that wasn't the only ones that this culminated with a really devastating injury that ended the spring game to running back Sean Dollars yeah that was a really scary incident they had actually kind of finished the game and they went to red zone drills the first play of that a little counter play and it wasn't necessarily the hit it was the impact on the ground and it was down on the field for you know 15 minutes they had to cut his jersey off they had to stretcher him off now he did go to the hospital uh, he was released later in the the night so everything was negative there but yeah that is the one thing you want to avoid is injuries specifically ones like this unfortunately Nevada was not allowed or I guess able to avoid those injuries there were a number of nicks and bruises throughout the there entire really scrimmage. were and you could uh, hear a pin drop inside Mackey Stadium as the spring game ended on such a somber note and you mentioned that overtime period that was really when some serious evaluating was going to happen because the quarterbacks were live and, and they were actually going to play some serious red zone football. And that was essentially the first play of that red zone uh, uh, setup. And sure enough, Sean Dollars goes down. Here is Coach Choate after the game, after he had talked about uh, Sean Dollars' status and then talked about the game itself. I was kind of proud of the offense because with three of our top receivers out and, and we kind of start the second half, um, I thought they did a, a really nice job of putting a couple of drives together and, and operating. Um, still have some issues in the red zone. And the biggest thing that shows up to me is just, and, I, and I'm guessing that this has been a problem, is the, the unforced errors, the lack of discipline, whether that's you know four false starts, 12 guys on the field on defense on a two-point play, um, you know, not taking care of the football in critical situations. And so those are the things that we've got to continue to improve upon. And that's going to be a major emphasis for us, obviously, as we go through the, the remainder of the spring and into the summer program. Unforced errors, one of the biggest takeaways from head coach Jeff Choate. How does a head coach react to unforced errors? You're about to find out. Right knee on the break, ready? Okay, so here's what we got now, all right? When we break here, defense goes to this sideline, offense goes to this sideline. Seven on, seven on. Offense is going to work south to start, okay? So you'll have the wind at your back for the first quarter is what I'm getting at. About two and a half minutes to one-on-ones. That's fun today, kid. Remember, today's not the day to make stuff up. Tracks, tracks, tracks. Today's the day to rely on your coaching and your technique. Do what you've been coached to do. Effort's the price of admission. Bring it every snap. I just want to make sure we're good on me controlling the whistle on the quarterback. That won't jam you it up at all. Okay. No BS. No BS. It's about perfection, not direction, baby. You know. <laughs> Play a clean game. Protect each other. There's going to be opportunities. Maybe there's a shot that's questionable. Pull off on that. We're still teammates, right? 
Okay, so let's do this the right way today. Let's have a blast doing it, man. All right, here we go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. The chain guy was like, hey, just introduced himself. He was really cordial, and he's like, hey, I'll be the guy that is holding you back. And I said, no, no, you're not. <laughs> I said, good luck with that, first of all. Yeah. When we do the KORs, just have to make sure they have a ball. Yeah, just in case. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, do not throw an extra football here. One ball and seven on seven. It's got to give you some love, baby. Hey. Let's go. Let's not argue for anything today. Let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go. Field pressure. Oh, if I got opportunity here. We got an opportunity here. Mike, can you hear me? Punt it, punt it, punt it, punt it, punt it. That was awful by the old line. That series was garbage. Man. Got access. Give it to him. You go, third down, third down. Field goal, field goal, field goal. Field goal, field goal. We'll just flip it and go this way. You're burning daylight here, fellas. You're burning daylight. Remember, this is running clock. The longer you take on the sideline, the fewer plays we're going to have. All right, we got a shot here. Come on, come on, leverage on the perimeter. Go, 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 go. Nice shot, first down, out of bounds, you can sub. They should have killed it right there. Yeah, that's the sub, that's the situation. Ball out of bounds on their sideline because you can't tell if there's a sub or not. So they should kill it in that situation, allow us to sub. We shouldn't be waiting on you. There you go. Oh! Punt it. Offense is up, the punters, punters got money on the game right here. Try it. Get rid of it. Huddle them up. 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 Let's make sure we get this right. That's okay. Settle them down. Oh, you never know. Oh, you got it. Okay. Oh, oh! That's all right. Right idea. Right idea. Right idea. Here we go. Because yeah, this is going to be a delay if we're not careful. Let's go, Chubba. There we go. Good operation. Let's go do something with it now. Okay, got the first. Yeah, it's going to be a hold. It's going to be a hold. Well, well this one might be pre-snap here. Hang on. Hey, try to operate this quick because we've got a running clock. Brian, you hear me? Okay, it's the same thing we talked about on Thursday. These guys are these guys are just too casual. They got to get their cleats in their hand in the dirt. Guys are moving as we're snapping the ball. That's what they called. Ah. ah. He tagged him right there. We gotta punt this. We gotta punt this. Here we go. Punt it. Punt it. Punt it. Punt it. That's terrible right there. We had an opportunity to get a four down opportunity, and we get a procedure penalty. Call mama. Do it again. Do it again. Unforced errors, man. So you got base and nickel ready, and then when you get it, you go. Yeah, they're just they're all on the numbers right there when we when we get what we're doing we go. I think it'll make a significant difference for this organization. For more information on the number site or to place an You've been waiting a minute. Your local BMV or go online. Yeah, it'll be good. I appreciate you guys. Tell you what, when Coach Chota's out there, not only are the players going to get it, his staff is going to get it, and even the referees might get it a little bit. Yeah, really entertaining, and it does show you down at field level how fast that game actually is played. It keeps on moving, and the clock was running. Coming up next on our Nevada Football Spring Camp Special, we're going to dive into some position groups. No microscope bigger than the one in the quarterback room. That and more right after this. Hey there, friends, and welcome back to our Nevada Football Spring Camp Special. He's Chris Murray. I'm Mike Steffens, and we're diving now into various position groups, and we talked to quite literally every position group this spring except the quarterbacks, Chris, and that was calculated. <laughs> yeah, well, they were off limits to us. I think uh, <laughs> Jeff Joe wanted them to focus just kind of on football for now, but uh, it is a very interesting race. You've got a couple of returners, and Brendan Lewis, A.J. Bianco, started games for Nevada last year, and then a couple of newcomers, and Anthony Grigsby, he's a transfer from the junior college levels, and a little bit bigger name, Chubba Purdy, coming from Nebraska before for that at Florida State. So you really got four in contention for that starting job. And of course, last year we saw Brendan Lewis and A.J. Bianco both play significant time. But really, that team and that offense just wasn't conducive to their skill sets. And so the verdict is still out, really, on all these guys. Uh, six touchdown passes, 12 interceptions. So it wasn't conducive to a lot of very good <laughs> things. And really, you look at the last two years for Nevada, 
13 touchdown passes, 20 interceptions. Both the last two years, they had more interceptions than passing touchdowns. That's not a formula for winning ball games. So that quarterback position must get much, much better. And I do think if Brendan Lewis wins this job, and he seems to be the front runner, he showed some really good things at Colorado. So I wouldn't look at last year, his first at Nevada, and say, this guy can't play for the right. Wolfpack. He has a really good skill set. And of course, a lot of folks are excited to see what Chubba Purdy brings to the table. He was uh, coming off of an injury at the start of spring camp, was a little bit healthier as the spring game came around. But again, he wasn't full blast all of spring camp. Coach Chode again said he wanted to be that buffer between the media and the quarterbacks is a reason we didn't talk to them not to add any more pressure, but he did break down what he has in that room. Who the quarterback is is going to determine a lot of our identity, right? And so I think Brennan has had a really strong spring. I mean, he has. b -Lou's done a really nice job. Um, the guy that's probably been a little bit hard on has been Chubba because he's coming off an offseason injury. And I know that he's been frustrated because he hasn't been able to go through team reps, high completion percentage in seven on seven, but that's what you expect. So that's pro that part of the competition is going to continue into fall camp. Um, probably the dark horse, the guy that's had uh, a really good spring has been Grigsby. Uh, he's been a guy that obviously is a winner. He knows um, he's a grinder, man. The guy's a gem rat. Like he comes into my office every night and, hey, can we do this? Can we do that? But I think those, uh, you know, those three guys, I think, you know, quite honestly, I think have, have emerged and I think it's going to be a really good competition. AJ is a different skill set, but has had a really good spring as well. And so that's kind of the, you know, it's going to be these four guys. Hey, you know, in today's day and age, can you keep all four of them? You know, that's the question. And I don't have the answer to that. But that's one of the reasons we moved spring ball up. You know, we wanted to make sure that, hey, we had an opportunity to be candid and honest with every player in the program about where we saw them. And they have an opportunity to evaluate where they're at. And uh, in this day and age, you're, you know, I mean, I think it's naive to say, hey, we're just going to keep everybody in the program. I know that's not going to be the case, and that's not, that's just unfortunate, but that's the way that, that's the way modern football is. I can attest to uh, Grigsby's work ethic. He was the first guy out there ahead of the silver and blue game on that Saturday inside Mackey Stadium. So who's going to catch the ball? That is another uh, point of emphasis. Who will Nevada be throwing to? Maybe Cortez Braham Jr. emerges as a guy. The West Virginia transfer uh, making some noise in spring camp. But with that said, the pack's not returning a whole lot of production on, a, uh, on the ca catching <laughs> side. Yeah, four combined career catches at the FBS level among Nevada's returning wide receivers. So that is certainly an area that has to be impacted in the coming weeks and months before the season starts. You look at some of the top wide receivers for Nevada last year. Well, John Jackson III, he graduated, but Delvon Campbell put his name into the portal after spring camp. He's probably Nevada's top returning yep. wide receiver. Jamal Bell had transferred before spring camp to Baylor. So there are certainly some huge holes to fill. Though. I really like the young wide receivers, but can they be great in year one? That's a big question mark. Marshawn Brown from Bishop Minogue, I think he's a guy who's going to get a lot of playing time, but they need to bring in some veterans to help that group. Yeah, Marshawn certainly got a future, but is right now the time we will We'll soon find out. He's going to have to grow up pretty quick, as will that entire pass catching group. You saw Coach Cho put his arms around Andrew Savaniea, who did not participate in spring. He is a tight end out of Florida. Keep an eye on him as well. And of course, Kaleki Latu is a guy that uh, in the pack is excited to have back, as you see him there uh, back in that tight end room. Let's transition out of the running backs. As you see, Dominic Ball get a handoff here. He is a true freshman that folks are excited about. Graduated early from high school to be able to join the Wolfpack in spring camp. Was originally committed to Tulane and then flipped over to Nevada, but some really good power five transfers as well. Obviously, Sean Dollars, Ashton Hayes from Oregon and Cal joined Nevada last season, but Patrick Garrow the third, a transfer from Boston College where he was a captain, a very mature guy. He was an all ACC player uh, in 2021. So I think that's a pretty strong group. We'll see if the line can uh, open up some holes for the running backs. Let's hear from a couple of those newcomers on the offensive side of the ball. The running back room, uh, a lot of experience and leadership, uh, different type of energy. I'm a very confident guy, uh, and I'm a leader just by nature, and I bring a lot of passion. I play with a lot of passion. I lead with a lot of passion, and Coach shows the same way. Uh, you can, if you got a conversation, you can tell. So I feel like I blend in well here. And My favorite group is, like, they, they all funny, and then the thing is, when, when we get on the field, they all just come to work. So that's what I like about this uh, this receiver group. Even though they we got a whole bunch of young guys, they still come to work every day and put they all on the field. I feel like I'm me. I feel like I can go up and go on top of a DB, go get the ball. I can track the ball real well. I got good hands. Um, I can run routes real good too. I feel like I can get out my break, and that that's my uh, skill set is getting on my break and catching the ball.
Number eight got a little swag. We'll see what he brings to the table. Let's talk about the defensive line now. Boy, they're so excited to have Henry Ikahifo back. And also a new guy by Caden, uh, by the name of Caden Johnson. There'll be two pass rushers to uh, watch. Caden Johnson coming over from Wisconsin. He was a really high four-star recruit coming out of high school. He's got some pretty good experience. But yeah, Henry Ikahifo, you mentioned he came to Nevada as a tight end. A lot of moves from there, but transferred in from Cal last year. Was not eligible as a two-time transfer, but he should be an impact player at the edge. We had Henry mic'd up for the spring game. We'll have that coming to you in mere moments. Let's quickly talk about the secondary that is a position that has been bolstered a bit through the transfer portal especially at the safety slot did lose some key players Amani Johnson graduated Richard Tony Jr. transferred over to TCU but yeah you have to really like Keaton Crawford he's a transfer from Texas and then Keyshawn Cobb a transfer from West Virginia probably your top two safeties I think both those guys could be all conference players and there's KK Meyer taking a pick six back in his home state of Texas just last season let's hear from Henry Ikahifo and Mr. Crawford Man, that was probably one of the worst experiences of my life. Uh, just sitting on the sidelines every Saturday, seeing my boys go out to war, and I couldn't help them at all. And I couldn't make the impact that I know I could make. Uh, it actually hurt me a lot mentally, but it also brought a fire back in me to prepare myself for this upcoming year. Uh, it was a big learning step for me, and, and I'm just grateful that it happened because I came back better and stronger, and I came back lighter than ever. So I, I would say I'm grateful for that. I feel like I'm a great pass rusher. Uh, this conference doesn't have a, like, you know, known for a lot of pass rushers. We have one last year at Colorado State, a couple at Fresno State, and I want to be that one for Nevada. Uh, I want to make sure that we bring that edge. You know, we got a, we added a couple uh, weapons to the room, Solo, Caden, and it just feels good having two edges on the field with me that, you know, can ball and do the same exact thing as me. Just coming here, well, obviously I, I played mostly special teams. So I got a couple of snaps, but uh, coming here, I'm expected, well, I hopefully to get, like, a lot of more snaps here so I can you know, grow my experience at safety. And what do you hope to bring the Nevada defense this year? Just uh, a lot of energy. I hope to be a leader as well. But uh, just to have fun. You know, he's joined my last year. Excited to see what some of these new faces can do. How about familiar faces? There are a lot of locals making impacts on this team. We've already talked about a bunch of them. We'll hear from them next as our Nevada football spring camp special rolls on. Welcome back to our Nevada football spring camp special. He's Chris, I'm Mike. We're talking local products on the 2024 Wolfpack at this point, and there's some upperclassmen, there's some underclassmen, and there's a lot of kids that have a chance to be impact players this season. You can't call yourself Reno's football team if you don't have some kids from <laughs> Reno on the team. And yeah, it's really exciting whenever you have a local Northern Nevada high school product uh, opt to play for the Wolfpack and for the Wolfpack to reciprocate and say, we want you to be a part of our program. So you go up and down that roster, there are a lot of kids from Northern Nevada high schools uh, on the Wolfpack's 2024 group. And a lot that have the chance to see the field this season. You just saw the North Valley's kid, Cam Zeidler, catching a touchdown last year at Utah State. There is Ashton Hayes, who we will talk about uh, coming up here in a little bit because he did not participate in the spring, as didn't Jackson LaDuke, the Oregon transfer by way of Spanish Springs High School. We've talked in exhaustion also about Marshawn Brown. How about Tyler Miller? Graduated early at Galena High School. He could have been kicking it his final <laughs> semester of high school. Instead, he said, no, let me go back to the bottom of the pile and start spring football early as a true freshman. Could have been the big man on campus there in South Reno. Instead, <laughs> grinding through spring camp. Uh, shows you how smart the kid is as an offensive lineman to be able to graduate a semester early. And this is a guy who actually stuck with Nevada through the coaching change. Committed to under Ken That's Wilson. Right. Had some other FBS scholarship offers but opted to stay with the Wolfpack after Jeff Choate was hired. And it doesn't sound like he regrets that move at all. Seems like he gained a lot from this spring camp. Uh, let's hear from a few of those locals starting with Tyler Miller on what it means to suit up in silver and blue. I think it means a lot. You know, I, I grew up coming to all the home games, going to every game mostly when Coach Holt was here and everything growing up. It was kind of an inspiration once I got an offer here. So I think I'm just really happy to be home and be here. The spring ball, I feel like it's just, for me, it's just like developing my, my confidence. You know, just getting, getting back into it really. But I feel like the biggest difference between uh, spring ball and, and uh, fall is just, you know, just learning really. Like learning a new playbook and that's really it. It was amazing being home. Uh, you know, I told pretty much everybody I'd rather be two and ten here than whatever we were at Oregon. Um, it was it was awesome being able to be in front of my family and friends and just being here because I, I love it here and plan to stay here. 
Really excited to see what a healthy Jackson Leduc can do this season in that linebacker room. Same case goes for Ashton Hayes in that running back room. Boy, he captivated us as a part of the teams at Damani Ranch and McQueen High School. Starts his career at Cal, ends up back in silver and blue, and we just got a tiny glimpse of him before he got injured uh, last year at Texas State. That injury, we didn't know a ton about it, except mm -hmm. it was a knee, Chris. This spring, we found out it was a serious knee. Yeah, it was a torn ACL. That's about as bad as you can get in the knee. I guess the silver lining is he had only played four games, so he can take that as a redshirt, has an extra year of L eligibility at Nevada. Yep. I mean, he's known for his speed. Hopefully that speed is all the way back when he does hit the field this fall. Uh, that guy works as hard as anybody. I'm sure he's rehabbing the heck out of that thing to be 100% for Nevada this season. You did have a chance to talk with him. We're not going to hear from him in this moment, but you had a chance to talk to him early in spring, and then they've essentially made him off limits because he wasn't <laughs> participating. What was the message you got from 26? Uh, just that he's very excited, and I think that's the message from all of these guys. As we mentioned, a lot of these guys, almost all of them, signed under Ken Wilson, so they were buying into that vision. I think a lot of them have quickly bought into the vision of Jeff Cho. Yeah. And I think a lot of that, as Drew Watts said, is because of Nevada itself, the university, the community, uh, and then the coaching staff on top of that. And Jeff Cho has even said, uh, the reason that a lot of these guys wanted to stay here was because they love this campus so much. So I think for those locals in particular to be able to represent the silver and blue, play for the Wolfpack, a team that they grew up rooting for and going to games at Mackey Stadium, it's very special for them. And they, more than anybody else, want to get Nevada back up yep. to the top of the mountain, back up to that championship level, back up to going to bowls year in and year out. Those kids growing up saw that happen as fans packing Mackey Stadium, and now they want to do it again as players. We don't have time to list every local product. Do want to get a Chris Smalley mention in uh, the Douglas product is in his upperclassman years now. Can't believe it, a junior, but he saw significant playing time and he expects to uh, make an impact this season as well as one of those edge rushers. All right, coming up next here on a Nevada football spring camp special, we're diving into one of the fun feature stories out of this spring. Tori Mulkey is no longer Tori Mulkey. That story right after this. Welcome back to our Nevada football spring camp special. I'm Mike Stephenson. In 2024, Nevada's number 28 on defense will have a different name on the back of his jersey. Nevada Sportsnet's Shannon Kelly explains why. Last Christmas was one to remember for the former Tory Mulkey and his stepfather, Eric Daffin. I didn't know what I wanted to get him for Christmas, so I was just like, I know how much this would mean to him if I changed my name. So we got with the lawyers and stuff, started the process, and uh, that was my Christmas gift to him. The Alabama native changing his last name from Mulkey to Daffin this offseason to honor the man who made a big impact on his life growing up. Just seeing his, the smile on his face, you know, he makes so many sacrifices and stuff for our family. Like, it was definitely nice to see. Those sacrifices beginning when Tori was in elementary school and his mom was stationed in Germany as part of the Army. Eric becoming a father figure to the young man that now shares his name. I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for him. At times, there, he just taught me so many lessons and stuff. And when I was young, I used to think, like, he was just hard on me, like, oh, you know, maybe because I'm just a stepchild and stuff, but now that I'm older and stuff, I realize, like, he was just formed me to be a man. Daffin's path to Reno wasn't easy. After being ruled ineligible by Alabama State, he began his career at East Central Community College in Mississippi and would find a new home out west three years later, transferring to Nevada in January 2023. I love just Reno, like coming from a small town, always like Alabama, just super country stuff. So I definitely love Reno. Tory adds he probably wouldn't be in the biggest little city either without his family's support, as Eric helped spark his love for playing on the gridiron. He definitely introduced me to the game of uh, football when I was younger and stuff. He actually had uh, scholarships and stuff to go play, but like you say, he had a kid at a young age, so he wanted to, uh, he joined the military and, um, just so he can make sacrifice stuff for our family. Now in his second and final season with the Wolfpack, the five foot eight safety hopes to help Nevada reach a bowl game for the first time since 2021 under first year head coach Jeff Cho. Not the biggest or stuff. I always had this like this fearless mentality. When my numbers call or when I'm not on the field, like I'm not, you know, just scared, I just just play, you know. So I think that's where it really comes from, just being fearless. In Reno, Shannon Kelly, Nevada Sportsnet. 
So Shannon put together a great piece. You and I actually did that interview with Tori, and man, I came away so impressed by him. He even gave us a shout out on Twitter. He was so <laughs> thankful that we took the time to talk with him, which that's just our job. I mean, I know we're breaking down like all the positions and stuff like that. That's what this is about. I mean, these guys are kids. These guys are trying to grow into men, and they love playing football, and they're doing it here at Nevada. So great to know his story yep. coming from all the way across the entire country growing up in Alabama, a uh, tremendous young man, and uh, we'll see the role that he has this season. And you said it, each and every one of these players has a story, and ultimately that's what we love to do is share those stories. Sure, it's fun to cover games, and it's fun to cover winning teams, but at the end of the day, every player has a story, whether they're a winner or they're not winning games, and we love to share those with you in the community. All right, we're almost done. Can't believe it with our Nevada football spring camp special. We've got another guy mic'd up for the spring game, though, Henry Ikahihifo. If you were excited to see him play, you're going to be excited to hear him talk as well. That's right after this. I'm mic'd up. How your spring game going? Oh, it's going pretty well. Yeah. Uh, I wish my boy Henry was out there with me, but oh. you know, I still love my dog. <laughs> pass! 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 Good job, Solo. Good job. Hey! Yeah! Pass! Pup. Oh, that's tough, baby. Come on, dude. Did he just... All right, Bilu. Tell our man there what? Blitz a Leo. Blitz a Leo. Blitz a Leo. The style. Hey, hey, that's a good lesson right there, right? So yeah. you're going in, you got to say, hey, Davis, I got you. Or whoever I got you, you got to keep that. Got you. Ain't nobody got me. You was too locked in, huh? Ain't nobody too locked in. <laughs> you over here got two sacks. How your spring ball going? It's going great. Yeah. yeah. I'm enjoying it. The season going good. Yeah. I'm really just having fun. I'm here having fun. Bro. Yeah, OK. Uh, <laughs> I'm the ops. Hey, I'm the ops. Watch what y'all say. I'm the ops. Watch what y'all say. I'm ready, coach. <laughs> you tough. Hey, you tough. You tough. Wow. You ever get that rash? Oh, hey, hey, hey. Oh, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> See, he's not even like it. Yeah, yeah. See, that's what you get. I have no rash. Stop lying. Stop lying to these people. I was just kidding. I was just kidding. You want to know it's crazy? Austin actually mixed this gaba with us. That's talking. <laughs> He mixes scava with us. If you don't know, you gotta look it up. Did you get home? Nah, the center continued. Oh, they, they slid to yeah. your side? Oh, okay. Did you pop it one more or no? You stayed? No. The tackle pulled, right? You gotta, you gotta yeah, pull. pull. So remember, pull, you. you stay you, off his. No, no, you're going straight to the QB. It's a mess charge. So the back is Drew's. You're, you're the QB right. player. Yep. Okay. It's exciting, man. They get to see the real me. This is a great guy. Don't don't start with him. Um, don't don't say it. Don't say it. Us Nevada dudes, man, you gotta watch 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 us sometimes. He has to take the A gap, walk up. Nelson's gonna wrap around and should be a sack. Right? Let's see what happens. Now. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, T. Okay, big brother. Yo. Oh yeah, T. Man, thank y'all for coming out, supporting us on the spring game. Go Pack. Yes, sir. You can tell Henry's quite a presence, not only on the field, but on the sideline as well. Hopefully he got that rash taken care of. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I have no rash. I love how they're messing with him. And a Tuni Ikahihifo, his older brother, getting the tackle there at the end as those guys get to play together. Just about a minute left here in our Nevada football spring camp special. There's going to be a lot of movement over the summer, and there's already been a little bit of movement as far as transfer portal talk goes. So we're going to talk about just two guys really quick that were expected to be big returning players, Delvon Campbell and Marcel Walker Burgess. They're looking elsewhere, Chris. Delvon Campbell led Nevada in receiving yards last year he was going to be a big target for whoever won the quarterback job and then Marcel Walker Burgess had the most sacks on the team last year with four really quality edge player you could also throw Jax Leatherwood in there uh, he's a quarterback from Nevada Darian Wiley as well he actually joined the team for spring camp so you're going to see this attrition this is modern college football and as Jeff Choate said he wants to get 80 percent of the roster bought in by the season opener yep. like he's not under any delusions that this thing's going to be perfect in year one okay so again this show will be airing throughout the summer as we get ready for the start of fall camp which will be July 24th so make sure to stick with NevadaSportsNet.com and NSN tonight on weeknights as we continue to track the portal comings and goings because there's going to be a lot of them and we have you covered any final thoughts on spring just exciting i think whenever you have a new head coach and a new tenure there's always a ton of hope and optimism i think jeff Choate's going to do a really good job in time we'll see what he can do in year one let's kick this thing off already <laughs>
For Chris Murray, I'm Mike Steffens, and shout out to our producer, Zach Larson, and our director, Jacob Smethurst. That is your Nevada football spring camp special.